Hello, everybody. All my 191,000 fans out there. I just want to let you uh, in on my life lately. It's been real rough here. My wife will forgive me for the bad things I've done to her in the past. Like Matt, uh, saying congratulations for finishing your bachelor's degree and stuff like Oh, congratulations for finishing your master's degree. And the uh, well, last anniversary, 11 years of so November, she wanted a new uh, iPhone. And it cost me $700 so I could buy a mile, and hers was free. Um, you know, I do a lot of stuff for her financially that she hasn't told you. Did I tell you uh, I felt so sorry for her about six or seven years, eight years back of our marriage. She was paying heavy interest rates on her credit cards, like $100, $200 a month. And I felt sorry for her, which was a big mistake in my life because Helen is a big spender. She will spend cash that she will never be able to pay and pay back anybody. She didn't tell you that, did, did she? But I was a real sucker for her. I get offers all the time from my credit card company. I had an 810 rating for a credit card. I guess I always pay my bills. I was brought up Catholic, and I believe uh, if somebody gives you money, you should pay it back. That's the way I am. That's the way I've always been my whole life. That's why I got an 810 credit rating. And the credit card paid me, not me paying them. They paid me three, four hundred dollars a year in gifts for using their card. They also sent me cards for free interest for a whole year, which I didn't need myself because I already had, didn't need anybody to loan me money. But my wife, she was sure in bad shape, paying hundred, two hundred dollars in interest every month. So like a, a big sucker that I am, I got scammed, you know that, what a sucker I am for that. And a big sucker for trying to help people that are in big trouble. But my wife, you know, she, I wanted to keep her happy. So I gave her three or four credit cards with my name on it. So whatever she's charged and she doesn't pay goes against me, her husband. I didn't think she was going to do that. I thought she was just going to help her to save interest every month for a whole year. That would be a lot of money, like uh, $1,500 maybe as much for one year for one card. Did she forget to tell you that? Really people, um, how much can you do for your wife? Also, uh, when I first met my wife, she was uh, a daycare person. She um, got the job of watching people that got sent home from the hospital to die. You know, maybe six months or less. That was a, uh, a job that's very uh, depressing to me. And uh, that's what she was doing when I met her. It was because of me. Uh, she had a place to live and get, we got we married. And she had to get a place to get all the computer stuff for her so she can get a degree in teaching, which she has now. And what good does it do? We went to this move here to save her an hour trip to work and an hour trip back to this expensive apartment that we live in. And I want to tell you how much it is, but it's very expensive. And it's right next to the school. If she has to, she could walk over to school. I know I've been in a lot of trouble for her in the hospital, demanding her to come visit me, because everybody in the hospital could do whatever they wanted to with me. They took advantage of me. Anyway, I'm not going to talk about the hospital, but I'm, um, I just can't help it. I got sick again, and uh, I needed somebody in the outside world to come see me. And I took up too much of her time, I think. She couldn't go to work. And uh, when I got out, of course, I needed some attention too, especially with that stupid hospital rule. Oh, our patients must have, uh, um, what do you call that thing? Uh, they put on your penis so you can go pee in the bag. That caused me so much pain. I really needed my right to help me. 
especially with the hospital, stupid ass rules that they have there. None of the other hospitals I went to ever did that. Why did they have to put that thing on my penis? That's another reason why I hate that hospital so much. They're crazy people. And the worst of it all is, I can't prove anything. I can't get a lawyer and tell that lawyer, uh, how can he prove anything? It's all in my, my, my word against theirs. They're getting by them with murder. Once they get you in the hospital, people, you have no control over your own life. If they want to make your business, it's their business. You can't do nothing about it. And they're not going to do anything to you that you can prove in court. Oh, well, anyway, um, I'm sorry I got sick again. I didn't ask to get sick. I hate getting sick and going to the hospital. The hospital is the last name before the grave to me. That's what I think of them. Anyway, uh, I, you know, she spent time here with me, but why did she take three days before she was able to remove that uh, thing from my penis so I could walk around my own apartment here without carrying that stupid bag around and the uh, air holes that me, I'm running with them around with uh, this apartment with an air hole uh, following me everywhere I go. It was difficult just getting from one room to the next. Anyway, I'm sorry about that. I took up her time. Why did she have to call on Friday and call to her job and say she's going to come to work? Why did she have to do that? She could have stayed off and rest a little bit longer. We could afford it. No. She called him up and told him, I'll be at work on Friday morning. And what happens? She was so tired and so sleepy. She slept right through. Like she does on the weekend. She'll sleep till 12 o'clock at noon. She said, so always had trouble getting to sleep and the slightest noise will wake her up because she got that way from taking care of the older people that were going to die. Anyway, um, I felt sorry, you know, for her for losing her job. It, why did she call in and say she's going to be there and then she did it? They had every right in the world to fire her ass. And they did. And now here, I do all this big favor for her. Let her remove when her paid off house and it had to be pay off here in Florida because the people, nobody would have given me, give me a hundred dollar loan. How let alone forty some thousand dollars for a house. God, she ruined my credit so much we had to buy cash. People uh, don't understand the whole situation. I gave that woman thousands of dollars just to keep her happy. Of course, she doesn't spend much money on clothes or makeup or going to the salon and getting her hair done. But she spends money on trips. I even bought a timeshare for her that cost me 300, uh, 300 bucks a month. A stupid ass timeshare. That's only for the very rich people. And you pay so much, then you have to pay a maintenance fee to, help, to help them to keep that apartment clean. With a place you go away from home to be at home in another beautiful place. It's for very rich people, not me. I really didn't even make that much. But I gave that to her just to keep her happy. We had a time share for two or three years too. Sometimes uh, we were living up back in Illinois, she'd drive a hundred miles south, that's how far the time share was, and spend a couple days here by herself and have some peace of mind a place to go, a resort for her, so she would be happy. But let me tell you about the big thing. Uh, after about a year or so of marriage, back in 2007, 2008, uh, I loved my wife very much. And I know she was sending hundreds of dollars down to the Philippines because she has a, a daughter there, Joanne, and she has a son which used to be Carlo, it was, now he changed his name to John Yo-Yo. But anyway, it's still her son. And also Joanne uh, got pregnant a couple of times and no marriage. She had two children. And my wife was spending most of her paycheck sending all that money down there so they would have something to eat and a place to live. And what did I do? Another uh, heartwarming uh, mistake of my life. I helped her, I paid for all those, their whole family 
to come up to the United States and get uh, uh, become citizens of the United States. I paid for all that, and believe you people, that cost thousands of dollars. And I didn't mind doing it because I love my wife. I wanted her to be happy. And then with the kids being here, they can go out and find jobs, which they did. Then when uh, her son and daughter went to work for Great Lakes, which is only eight miles uh, south of us, when we were living in Waukegan. That's where all the Navy people, when they sign up, they had to go to boot training camp. That's where the base is. It's right in North Chicago, a town just south of Waukegan. And they had the Great Lakes Naval Base there, right on Lake Michigan. And just a little bit south of there, the golf course, I used to caddy there when I was a, a young in high school. And did an extra buck or two to buy my cigarettes. <laughs> Anyway, they on a rich Shore Acres golf course, right south of the Great Lakes uh, area. And uh, that's where I spent my life as a teenager in the summertime, sweating my ass off, carrying two bags, only to hit the light from the, my uh, golfer that hired me and would buy me a nice Pepsi Cola at the end of nine rounds. And if drink was so good, nice cold Pepsi Cola drink after sweating your balls off for nine holes. And then I carry two bags too. That's the only way you can make some money even caddy. Carry two bags, one bag. You're never gonna get any money at all, people. It was just like uh, five, ten dollars for carrying two bags. That's the pay of caddy got back there in the late 50s, early 60s. Um, but anyway, and ladies and gentlemen, though, all my fans, I want to tell you, I spent thousands of dollars bringing her family over here. And uh, I did more than that. Joanne was having trouble with her kids in the school up there in Zion, which is a town north of us, where she rented an apartment to be with her black boyfriend, not in marriage again, and which later on developed into Sean, the black boy that you've seen in my videos, in the past. Most of you have been around the world know all about it, especially on my last birthday. Sean was with me. It was close to his birthday too. So we were soil baited once and that was the time with the air show. We went to the uh, air show over in Jacksonville. Uh, uh, we moved to Jacksonville too because uh, they have a big naval base here for the Air Force. And uh, my wife thought it would be a good idea because then her son and her uh, her daughter can get jobs there because they had already had jobs over at Great Lakes in North Chicago, Illinois. Uh, which they did both get jobs, and then she wouldn't have to send them three or four hundred dollars every month from her pay, a small little measly paycheck for taking care of the old people to them. So I saved her a lot of money then. Because of why? Because I loved her. That's why I did it. I'm not a, a kind of person who just keeps money in the bank and, say, and keeps it all to myself and say, oh, I'm so important, I got more money than most people. I spend it on my wife to make other people happy, including, especially my wife. Why, now why? She doesn't want to do enough. I'm, I'm sorry I got sick and caused her to get fired, but I don't think that's the reason she's leaving. She's just sick of me being tied down with me, and I'm getting older. She said, well, all the time, we never sent any of our family to the nursing home. Maybe it's the time now between now and I have to go to the nursing home, it's just where she can't stand me anymore. I can do a bunch of stuff for myself. She don't do much now to pick up after me. Sure, she keeps the kitchen clean, looking after where our two kids don't. They don't care. She keeps the dishes, uh, running the dishwasher, you know, cleans up after two kids. I don't make a mess, what she got to clean up with me. Especially now, I'm out better walking around and taking care of myself. She don't need to fix me dinner anymore. I can fix my own dinner. What is she doing for me? Absolutely calling me serious heartbreak. The only relief I can get from my life is to go out and have some fun uh, singing at a karaoke place. 
right from the start, we said we're only going to use the highest quality. And as far as the bedroom, just forget it, people. I know I wasn't the best person to be in bed. Older, all older people are like this. They have a little bit of ED and stuff like that. So maybe it's only sex, maybe once a month. Now I can't even get that. And that makes you very unhappy. Because I spent all my money on that woman. It's all gone. And I think now she knows that. She ran my bank account dry with the timeshare helping her get her family over here and uh, buying the timeshare for her. She ran my bank dry for everybody. And now that that's gone, the only thing she got left is to get divorced and get half the money in the house. I'm glad at least she's not going to try to get more than the half. And some women are so mean to their husband, they'll do that too. It's all about well, who got more went from the divorce? Touch away for people to live nowadays. And it's going to hurt the kids, even though uh, she's not going to have the money or to do the stuff she wants and to, have to, to, to adopt the children. Today, uh, just yesterday, we had to spend hours at the Social Security Board so we can get a change. But she gets the check for Social Security for our two adopted children that goes straight to her bank and not mine. And I went along with that, just to keep her happy. And did, did I get some time with her in the bedroom? No. She just thought, told me, I'm never going to have sex with you again. So just get it off your mind. Now is that way, any way a woman to treat a man like me? who gave her thousands of dollars, gave her a good life in the United States? It might be best if we talk about... Is that a way to treat men? When they get too old, just get rid of him. And uh, since he doesn't have any more money in his bank account, make him sell the rest of the house and get your money out of that. And another thing I did for my wife, too, I got her started on YouTube. She would have took years and years to, to get the viewers she got now. She hasn't made one cent on YouTube yet, but she's getting close to it now. I gave her all my help, letting her go on my channel, where there's 191,000 subscribers, to help her out. And what's the thanks I get for it? Oh, no sex with you ever again. Is that thanks, people? Is that the kind of people you admire? Why did my wife get so mean all of a sudden? It occurs to you that this and the thing at the hospital, when she went home and made a crying video for you, I told her I wanted to die, because she was sticking with the hospital, with them taking off that mask they put on, and I had a full mask like that over here at the, at the Orange Park Hospital. You remember me complaining about those people, how much they were treating me like a little baby. They wouldn't let me use that nice washroom to shave. They wouldn't let me go there and, and clean my dentures and brush my teeth there over the sink. They wanted me to do all that in that backache, backaching bed. I was so glad when they let me get out of that bed and sit down on a chair. You can believe the happiness. Anyway, um, the uh, St. Vincent Hospital. If you ever get sick here, <laughs> I gave you my warning. I can't prove it in court, but I had a very bad experience that was worse in my life. Um, what was I going to tell you? I we forgot. But, uh, oh yeah, why uh, she would make that crying video. She was sticking up for those people with that mask they put on me that hurt my face. Nobody would listen to me. It really hurt my face. The mask over at, at the, at the uh, uh, Orange Park Hospital didn't do that. It was nice to have an SFP because you could breathe through your nose and your mouth, which I was so uh, deprived of oxygen when I arrived there. I don't mind them doing that for me. And it didn't hurt my face, people. 
you can't imagine though somebody slapping that thing on you it's kind of pushing you feel it like it and what do you have besides a long hot 24-hour day hospital stay getting bored you can think about all the pain coming from your face from that mask and it helped my vi vision too uh, i couldn't see out of it clearly so what did i do i pulled her up and she said well what are you doing she was sticking up with them there was nobody in the world for me they were all against me including my loving wife or used to be a loving wife and i treat her me too why wouldn't you wouldn't you somebody putting a mask on your face why couldn't they just use the oxygen tubes up my nose what is that hospital was so crazy for her. why are they allowed to operate causing serious pain and to enough to drive me into the insane asylum putting stuff over my hands to keep me from pulling anything else off i didn't pull off my heart monitor I didn't pull off the IV tubes in my arms. They were just mad because I wouldn't put that painful, keep that painful mask on my face. If they want to give me oxygen, which is fine with me, all they do is use the plastic hoses that went up in your nose. And and I hate to hear you people making comments about me in the hospital. We're back there in the orange, uh, mm -hmm. orange Park Hospital about that white mustache. They thought that it was cute to put that white mustache in me to hide those tubes that are going into my nose. And a lot of you people thought it was my real mustache. That made me so upset, people. I didn't like that. I would never grow a big white mustache like that. They come around all the way this long, this big. They just put that there. It was a decoration, they thought. They would make you look better. They wouldn't show those two awful ugly looking things pointing in your nose i don't know what to say to you people uh some of your comments didn't make me very happy back then and uh what my wife is saying to me now no sucks i just i just i don't understand what went wrong man what am i gonna do in the future what can i do when i will get i just called the government up and say i can't take my care of myself anymore i need help i'm going to suck me in a nursing home and run with little money i have left in the house in the bank and take every penny of that i know those places are very expensive even insurance for that nursing home is extremely expensive that's what happens when you get old people to die my buddy joe uh then i visit up north when I was visiting my daughter, Lorraine, over near Chicago, I went. I wanted to go back to my old town for a while and see if I had a good time, where I started my karaoke there back in 2009. I lived in Waukegan uh, most of my life. I lived 10 years just north of the border, which is only about eight miles from that house, where I spent 26 years in that townhouse, where I came from when we left Illinois. Um, my friend Joe, got sick one time he had to go to a nursing home I was dying there and he wanted me to take him there because he was lonely sitting in that trailer park he used to live with his other niece over a narrow and nice beautiful house up just over the border in Wisconsin much nicer than the house I had it was worth about three or four times what I had and uh, I guess something happened where that niece got tired of taking care of him and stuck it the duty for Joe that was split with her sister, another niece of Joe. That niece did not like me. She accused me of take, stealing money from her and taking one of her credit cards. I don't know why she hated me, but I knew Joe since 1962. He was the only friend I had left. I had a lot. They all, the rest of them died. Anyway, he wanted me to take him up to the nursing home and this is a paper there. You know why? Not because he's in love with nursing home. He, it was his only uh, entertainment to get out of the house and talk to other people. He made friends with those pit workers down there. And he wanted me to take him over there because Joe uh, doesn't have enough money to buy a car. And uh, 
I tell you anything about Joe. Uh, he's a very nice uh, person, and warm-hearted, like me. And that's why I was friends with him since 1962. If everybody you want to know the math, it's 38 plus uh, 18, uh, 15, uh, 56 years. It's a long time to know somebody outside the family. But that's why he was going and wanted to go up to that nursing home. And his family got made sure I didn't stay there any more than three days. They kicked me out. And I have to leave. I came out the the big truck that rental car company up there in uh, um, yeah, my daughter's town up there. Uh, uh, whatever, it doesn't matter where where she lives. Um, that's the only thing I had left, the big old Ford truck to rent. Either rent that or just give up and go on back to the hometown. You know, it's 40 miles uh, north where my daughter lives. You need a car to get to. Should have just told my daughter, let me use your car. If that truck costs her much more money, I got a hundred dollar fine for the red light violation. Which I don't even remember, but they have pictures of it. I had to send them to Waukegan a hundred dollars for that fine. And uh, I probably got distracted because I had to drive a pickup truck. I'm not used to driving pickup trucks. And uh, also, uh, I was really hurt that her, Joe's niece would accuse me of such thing. I would never steal anything from not even the smallest thing from people like that. Not even something worth five cents or less. Because I'm not that kind of person. I am happy when people let me spend the whole night in their house and uh, save me money from having to go to a motel. And Fifty, sixty dollars, whatever, at big expenses, would they way overcharge nowadays. Anyway, we stopped over my sister, my sister's house, which was a, a town over. But my sister and I never got along that good. She uh, had one party over her house, what, about 10, 15 years ago. And I finally got to visit her and got to see her and her husband in their house. Man, why are you asking me why I couldn't have spent time with my sister? My sister has got so much money, people. If she gave me a house she did it, I would have to give it, tell it right away because I couldn't afford the taxes there. Yeah, rich people got to pay a lot of taxes. About 10 times of my tax bill, how would I ever afford to pay the taxes? <laughs> anyway, uh, that's why I didn't bother my sister. I know she ain't wasn't that crazy about me. I wasn't going to stoop as low enough to ask her if I could spend a night there at Joe. Joe's uh, relatives kicked me out of the trailer park. Really. Anyway, they didn't like that big truck I had. Her, his niece had a park on the street. And I guess uh, even the Park City, the village board, said you can only spend so many nights there. And then you have to leave. One of their rules, Park City, in the trailer park. All kinds of rules in the trailer park. Anyway, my sister remembers the guy I brought with me when we stopped there and visited him and talked for about half an hour. My sister even lived in the house and showed me all the stuff she'd done to it. She said, uh, her house is very expensive, and it's in a place, a city, it's a location where you live and where I used to live that costs people tax money. She had an overhead of $10,000 tax bill. That was years back. It's probably even more now. <laughs> well, and she don't want to, she don't want to move down here to Florida. She said it was too hot for her. Well, each his own. And I have another sister too in uh, Lake Villa. And watching all the YouTubes about the Catholic Church, the stories about what they did in the past. I say, I'm not telling people I was brought Catholic anymore. They did some serious bad things in the past that I don't forgive them for. And I told my sister about that. She said, instead of seeing those songs you do on YouTube, why don't you sing some religious songs at church? I said, I didn't shame to tell people I'm Catholic. Not after I was found out about it. And we had a big argument. And uh, I quit talking to her. I didn't go visit her. 
when I went back in hometown. But uh, my sister remembered that I brought Joe over to her house with me, and uh, and it was right down the way to his uh, nursing home up there in Zion that he made all his friends at that hospital, not a hospital, a nursing home. Anyway, uh, so after a while I got back in the September, around the beginning of September 19, um, I mean 2017. Um, no, 2018. Yeah, 2018. In September, uh, she sent me a letter saying, uh, uh, saying Joel Reinhardt's obituary. That he passed away two months later. He probably died of loneliness, people. 